Uganda's debt is continuously rising despite a number of government initiatives and donor interventions, and the country's private market environment is still confined by a small number of SME firms. Widening the tax base as a route to alternative financing, as well as involving many stakeholders from the formal and informal sectors in discussions on several alternative domestic borrowing, have been shown to be excellent for private sector-led growth models that aim to accelerate economic growth. These have emphasized that greater attention needs to be placed on encouraging local investments, since this will help URA increase tax revenue and broaden the tax base. It should be easier to access you know, domestic capital. The question for us is that, is it? And internally, we ask ourselves those questions. Uh, when somebody comes to us to say they want to launch a fund, or they want to register a fund, how easy and swift is it? So we're going on with the internal reforms to make it as swift as possible to um, register fund managers, private equity funds. We realize that we never had the ability to register a fund. So as the reform, as talking about the law changes, that's, that's really going to help for registration of funds, the actual funds especially if they're going to be raising capital domestically. Alternative investments actually related in helping us expand the tax base by helping businesses thrive, but also making businesses survive by their third year, because that is a big problem that we're having in Uganda today. The Minister of Finance has identified several key investment priorities, including private investments in the manufacturing and export sectors, over a five-year period to be taken into consideration. Climate financing, taking into consideration an agricultural credit facility through Commercial Bank, an export credit facility scheme for structured trade, and integrated East African community payment system with more than 40 currencies on the continent. Um, to support this trend, we are looking at... Um, an export credit guarantee scheme. Um, we, through the Uganda's Bankers Association, are interacting with them on a regional export facility. Uh, we hope that the public and private sector um, can be able to forge a cooperation to lower the risks associated with export trade. The other avenue is really upping uh, structured trade. Um, if we are to deliver uh, commodities, especially in the commodity space, as uh, I noted that commodities are among the alternative investments we are talking about, um, we think that uh, the work going on in terms of reviving the Uganda Commodities Exchange will be very critical. Can we begin to think about preserving these funds and get pension payments? It's a very delicate matter, which many of you don't want to listen to. That one can be testified from the meter access pressure. But the issue is, what is going to give you that certainty of cash flow is the pension arrangement. But from the, the discussion we're having today, to have that long-term liquidity and investment vehicles that we're trying to talk about, we cannot ignore that drop that can distort the financials in this market. The way forward to the above alternative investments is through government projects like UDB and UDC, where they need to accelerate their equity funds, especially focusing on the parish development model that is expected to reach $4 trillion by the end of the National Development Plan 3, actualize farming as a business and improve corporate governance. UDB and UDC need to accelerate the setup of their equity funds uh, which are provided uh, within the um, uh, legal framework. Um, that way, the capitalization that goes into these investment arms of government should be able to leverage more of the resources that are in the hands of uh, private players. Government funds like of that nature can co-invest with other private capital providers and agree to take maybe fast loss on certain strategic investments that are going to really boost employment and have other bigger economic impacts. Uh, so those are the other forms of uh, guarantees or uh, instruments that can give private capital comfort that, uh, and encourage them to invest in an economy. 
In November last year, the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Uganda, Mike Ating Ego, told Parliament's Finance Committee that the country's public debt had hit 80 trillion shillings as at the end of September 2022, which was then approximately 50% of the GDP. He further revealed, as Uganda's debt servicing in the current financial year 2021-2022 is at a rate of tax revenue estimated at 30%, and this suggests that any further borrowing with associated servicing in the short to medium term would constrain government development efforts. It is through the alternative investments that the country will be able to consider domestic borrowing rather than external borrowing. Naomi Mtumba, Smart24 TV, Business Today.